Hi everyone and welcome to another UE4 tutorial video by myself. Uh, this video was actually voted on by my Patreon, so big thank you and massive uh, big thank you for all their support they've given me um, thus far. Uh, so this video is all about adding nameplates above enemies or NPCs heads. And these nameplates are usually used in games to show health bars, level, names, those sort of things. Okay, so that's what we're going to achieve today. So, begin with, I have created um, an enemy AI, uh, parent class here. And in my enemy parent class, I've added a health variable and a level variable. The health variable is a float, which will go between 0 and 1. And its level is going to be an integer it's a whole number okay uh, they don't have any code on they're just basic dummies setting up so i've got an enemy parent and then i made two children of that enemy parent enemy one and enemy two so what you see in the world here this is enemy one and enemy two we'll use later on so enemy one is a child of enemy parent meaning that i can do loads of things like design nameplates to work with enemy parent which will then in turn work with enemy one and enemy two so make the NPC show a nameplate, we need to first of all design the nameplate. So I'm going to go right click and use interface widget blueprint and I'm going to call it nameplate. And I don't want a canvas panel, let's get rid of that. Instead let's use a size box like so and drag it down. And I'm going to do a width override and a height override and the width I'm going to do is 300 and a height of 50. And I'm going to go up to where it says fill screen and change this to desired. And that will make me see the proportions correctly in my viewport, which makes it a lot easier, I find, to design these things. So mine's quite simple. Um, I'm going to have a vertical um, box, first of all. And inside my vertical box, I'm going to have a text which should be the name of the enemy and then I'm going to have a horizontal box and inside the horizontal box we're going to have a text and a progress bar so we've got this all set up um, my progress bar I'm going to change from auto to fill and my text block I'm going to change to fill and leave it at 0.2 and that means it will take 20% of that width as its width okay whereas this will fill up the rest of it okay so here will be the level number which in this case would be like one for example so it will appear like so okay so that's our nameplate nothing fancy obviously you can design yours to look however you like but we're going bare bones basics um, for nameplate so for this to work we're going to go into the graph and I'm going to add a new variable and call it enemy and the variable type for this will be our enemy parent now because we're using enemy parent that means it has access to all the variables that every single enemy in that game will use so I can go back to my designer and click on the progress bar and I can bind the percent value to enemy health because it's a float it will allow me to do that um, with the text for the number one though that won't work just as well because enemy the enemy's level is an integer not a piece of text so we need to create a binding for this so click on create binding and I want to take in a uh, get the enemy sorry get enemy and I want to get the level and so we want to drag that over like so and now I'll put in the two text in so now I'll convert the integer to a text field which in my designer will now be bound to it get text to zero that bound to that so whatever level my enemy this nameplate belongs to it will change this text to accordingly the name of the enemy um, we can actually add that onto as well so what we'll do is go into our enemy parent and add a new variable and this will be this, uh, enemy name and this will be a text variable type and click compile 
go into your nameplate and you should now be able to choose your name binding to be enemy name. So go to enemy and then enemy name. So now these will be bound to those values. Go back to your graph editor on the widget and on there you'll see the enemy that we made here on the left hand side. We want to make sure that it is public so click on the little eyeball and that make it editable. I also want to make it exposed on spawn so that when I spawn this nameplate I can edit this particular variable. Click compile and we're kind of done here so what we'll do is we'll close this and the next thing we need to do is make it so it will show up above the enemy's head when we're looking at it. So over here we're going to go to enemy, not enemy parent, we're going to go into our third person character. So on your third person character we're going to make a tick event and we need a tick event because we need to check uh, if we're facing the enemy at all times um, and to do to actually do that check we're going to do something called a capsule trace now a capsule trace by channel is similar to a line trace by channel if you've ever used one of those before it basically spits out an invisible capsule out in uh, a certain direction a certain location and it will return its first hit back um, so if it is hitting a enemy for example we can spit out its nameplate so the capsule trace by channel um, we need to get the location of the player so we're going to go and get world location of the uh, camera boom and the reason why I'm doing a camera boom is because the camera boom is in the center of the capsule um, so you want the center of the capsule uh, get world location and that would be the starting point of our capsule trace the end point though we want to be in front of the mesh but in the angle from that is using from the camera so we need to get the camera so drag the follow camera out get the world rotation split the return value so you get the XYZ components and these components we only want the your okay so in here we need to right click again and go get forward vector split that rotation and as I said you just want the your so drag the rot z and the value z together and that's now got us a forward vector from the using the rotation of the camera um, that we have on the player um, with us we've got that we now want to add the length of this projection this uh, trace so to do that we multiply it by a float and I'm going to do 500 in this case and then I want to add this vector uh, to our world location our start now we enter the capsules de uh, details here so the radius and the half height I'm going to make it exactly the same as my capsule component on my character so my half height is 96 my radius is 42 so I'm just going to input those values there the trace channel we want to change that from visibility to camera and we want to draw a debug type for now for one frame so that will draw out a debug uh, image for us to test that this is working or not I'm going to click compile and let's just see if that's working correctly so you can see there I've got a capsule on the character itself but also you can see the red one out in the field if I walk in front of the enemy you can see the red one that was out there has now turned green and it's now on the, the red one's now on the actual enemy indicating that we've hit the enemy okay and it works for all sorts of things it's a way of checking what we need um, the capsule height is worthwhile and better than the line trace in this case because say if you've got an enemy that's actually shorter than the line trace you want to make sure that you're getting the full width and height of the enemy okay so that's that uh, the next bit is to do something with our out hit to actually display our nameplates so we go on to enemy parent let's create a function to display our nameplate so go on plus function 
and here we're going to add our nameplate to be above our head so we're going to call it display name plate on the viewport you want to uh, let me just delete my previous one so you can see it from scratch you want to go add component widget and I'm going to call my nameplate and with it selected on the details panel you can choose a widget class to be nameplate and you can see it hovering above the world uh, above the character's head like so now you don't want to use it as the default which is world space uh, we want it to be always facing the camera the whole entire time so I want to use screen space so on the right hand side where it says space world change that to screen it will disappear from here but that's fine um, then you've got draw it desired size we can tick that if you want and that should do it click compile and if I click play it should always oh why is it not showing okay weird I don't know why it's done that I just had to replace my actor in the world I don't know why it didn't do that but yours should work just fine so the uh, nameplate is now appearing above my enemy's head um, so I've just moved it above the enemy head like so so you can see it inside the game okay so it's always showing at the moment we want to change that so it doesn't show uh, all the time so we can use this line tray this capsule tray sorry to turn it off and on so let's start off with turning it off so go to nameplate and on the right hand side scroll down to see visibility in the rendering section visible so oh, no, won't show at all in our function display nameplate um, we want to just drag nameplate out from our component list and then from there we can go set visibility and you want to tick the new visibility to be true so that now tell that component to be visible on our third person character on the out hit you want to right click on that and choose split on the return value right at the bottom this will go into a branch a easy branch so if it has hit something that would turn true if it does I want to cast this hit actor our enemy parent and as enemy parent we can then display nameplate and click compile okay so from there if I was to play this it's hidden but if I turn around and hit it with the capsule it now shows so my next task is I want it to turn off when the capsule is no longer looking at it so what we're going to do is on enemy parent we can go to the event graph add a tick event and you're on vent tick we are going to check um, the uh, nameplate visibility so drag nameplate out look for is visible there we go and that returns a boolean true or false so if we want to only do this when it's actually on okay if it's on we want to then check the distance to the, the uh, player character get distance to so target itself the other actor is player character and I want to check whether or not this float is greater than 550 the reason why it's 550 is because my capsule trace is going 500 out so I want to go a little bit further distance before it turns off the nameplate so these two booleans can be combined into an AND which our event tick will then use in a branch and if it's true our nameplate set visible to be false so don't tick the new visibility leave it unticked so let's walk through that again nameplate 
we're checking whether it's not it's actually turned on if it is on and our distance to the player character is greater than 550 units away we're going to go and turn visibility of the nameplate off now if I push play nameplate appears but if I can turn around it still, it still shows a bit of usability thing there makes it a bit easier for the player to use and if I walk away it turns off which is quite nice so how to get actual data showing in that well on our enemy parent we have the health level and enemy name so level by default is going to be one enemy name by default is going to be blank in fact let's actually just put a name placeholder here so i go name like so and health should be one click compile and you want to tick these as editable so all of them have the eyeball showing instance editable and that all means I'll, I can place this in the world here and change their values here so health one level one enemy name duh. okay so my enemy name here can be Joe is level three and health of one now it doesn't work yet because we haven't tied it to that widget so on the enemy parent, go nameplate over here. And if you go into display nameplate, to get it to show that uh, correct details in the display nameplate, we've got a nameplate reference. We're going to get out of there and get the user widget object. And that gets the actual widget that is assigned to this component up here. So this widget, which we have over here, has this enemy variable which is exposed um, but what I want to do is return value from the get user widget I need to cast this to that correct widget and that will now give me access to the as nameplate so as nameplate I can then set the enemy that this widget is used for in which case from enemy you just want to get reference to self like so so if we were now to go into the game this character is joe level three full health and if i put in another enemy over here this enemy here has half health because he's been damaged already he's level 60 uh, 60 and his name is um drax i don't know so joe and then drax and that's how you do nameplates. So there's loads of ways of doing it. This is just one way. Um, the capsule, once you're happy with it, you can turn off the um, the, tra uh, the debug. So if I go onto my capsule trace, turn draw debug type to none. We'll just tidy it up like so. And it's seamless. Okay. And that's one way of how to do nameplates. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video and want to see lots more, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley and um, cast your vote on next month's videos there and uh, watch get and watch videos, get talking with Discord. And uh, yeah, see you guys next time. Bye bye.